sneaking out. Lubbock police say the man who was hit is currently in the hospital in serious condition. Now they add that the man was apparently trying to cross Avenue Q right here behind me. Now DPS says they will provide the names of those involved in this accident later on today. This not only is the most snow that we've seen all season, this is the most snow that we've seen since 2015. Not even 20 minutes ago, all of these seats here were filled with screaming, crying, happy fans. Tonight, the canteen, which is traditionally a mobile kitchen, won't be serving food, but instead they'll be serving socks, hats, and gloves to those who need it to survive the night. Now, fast forward five years from 2013 to 2017, that number has over doubled as more and more women are hitting the range and arming themselves. Now, more than 43% of those individuals packing heat are women. Manufactured and fabricated right here in Lubbock, experts say this staircase will end up on the cover of architecture magazines everywhere. That money is going to help educators here at the front of the classroom. But now the question is, if it comes from the district, is it going to hurt more than it helps? So many people think that to stop yourself from skidding on the road, you need to pump your brakes. But local experts say that's actually not the case. Instead, they say that you need to take your foot off the brake and then allow yourself to coast before putting your car into neutral. While no buyers have made any offers at the Party Plus warehouse, just a few feet over at Gale's Wedding Rentals and First Class Tuxedo, recent talks have made them optimistic for the future. Of the six Mounted Patrol officers, they say one of the biggest questions they're always asked is how do you arrest someone on horseback? So I volunteered to find out how. Over the past three weeks, doctors here at Star ER have seen about 12 to 15 patients a day experiencing flu-like symptoms, which include body aches, chills, and a fever above 100.4. Because this is the only place in Lubbock, again, I'll say that one more time, the only place in Lubbock that accepts both glass and styrofoam. The thing about the styrofoam, though, is it has to be the kind that breaks easily. It can't be the kind that would go around electronic like a TV that's more like a plastic and doesn't want to rip. Karen and Avner, to the untrained eye, Citizens Tower looks like it has a long way to go. But city officials say it's what's on the inside that really matters. Today I took a tour with Councilman Steve Massingale to see what's changed since our last visit and what's to come. This is going to be the main entrance down at this end. There'll be a lobby with, with someone to greet you and direct you whether you need to go up in the elevator banks or this big room here, it will be the council chambers where we'll have our public meetings. What you see across here is going to be a glass atrium that'll bring sunlight into the basement. Last week, city council approved a land exchange with a lot south of Citizens Tower and a parking lot downtown owned by the city. The exchange bringing Lubbock police to the new Citizens Tower location. So with the um, introduction of having the police station to the south of us, the street here, which is 14th Street, we've, all, we've had plans to close part of it. We anticipate there might be uh, some green space or uh, some type of um, courtyard uh, area that people might be able to come and enjoy. And so knowing that Police headquarters will be down here. We can finalize this and determine what our parking is going to look like. All of which is expected to be done by the end of 2019, which seems like a lot to accomplish to those not in construction. They see all of this and they go, there's no way that you're going to be done by the end of the year. <laughs> well, they may think that, but we're still on plan to be done by the end of the year. Um, you know, I think, I think it's, I guess looking in from the outside, you may think that, but it's just so much work that's going on behind those those glass windows there's already you can see the walls already being framed up there's sheetrock going in there's plumbing being done you can see here there's all, already been a lot of electrical work as well as HVAC work so all those things is, are the work behind the scenes that enables it to go together fast as 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 the project completes itself the project hopes to bring together all essential operations. You're going to be able to come down here, you're going to have adequate parking, you're going to have quick, easy access to departments, whether it might be utilities, PD, if you have to interact with PD, if you have business at municipal court, all will be able to be done from this location in downtown Lubbock right here. 
Massengale adds that, as of right now, they're right on budget, pending any unpredictable West Texas weather. We were on Indiana coming up here, and a red pathfinder crossed, went across three lanes, pushed us into the turning lane. This is a scene that happens all too often. This group tonight will go out on a ride, and I'll guarantee you there will probably be six instances that we have to look out for between here and where we're going. And it all has to do with people on the phone, making turns, no turn signals, and they're in a hurry. Remember your blinkers and hand signals. While it's vital for drivers to pay attention, LPD's Motors Unit says it's also important for riders to prepare before they hit the road. Go ahead and go somewhere and touch up on those skills. Go to a parking lot, you know, practice your braking skills, practice shifting through your gears. A skill they exercise themselves even after years of experience. You just kind of ride around and then do me some figure eights in a couple of like four parking spots. You know, like just four of them. Definitely you drive very defensively on the motorcycle. You're always scanning traffic, making sure that no one's pulling out in front of you or stopping abruptly in front of you. Um, general, generally, citizens do see you. They just don't care. They will pull out in front of you. So you need to remember that. My niece and nephew were hit head on in Delhart, Texas. The driver even stated that he saw him coming and thought he could beat him, and he didn't. It left my niece without a husband. It left his two children without a father. A tragedy that could have been avoided. You can take away family members so quickly. We have no protection. You have airbags, we don't. I mean, we want to go back home just as much as you want to get home, so you got to pay attention and stay alert. With a barber's license, you don't just learn how to cut hair. You learn how to do it safely and sanitarily. That's why the owner of a local barber academy says it's essential for a stylist to learn the correct ways before someone gets hurt. Scissors are sharp. They tell kids not to run with them, but yet they're going to give them to somebody that has no training. Jason Estrada has been cutting hair since he was a teenager. But he didn't know the correct materials to use until he went to school. Like I said, when I started cutting hair, half this stuff here, I didn't even know what it was until I started cutting hair, until I got educated in that field. These aren't just given out. You have to earn these things. And it comes with more than just cutting hair. But if HB 1705 is approved, that wouldn't be a requirement. And neither would the knowledge of sanitation skills that one would have learned in the classroom. That means that anybody without a license, even people like myself, could come here and pick up a pair of scissors and call themselves a hairstylist. Sponsor of the bill, Texas Representative Matt Shaheen, told our NBC affiliate in Fort Worth that the legislation will help expand employment opportunities by eliminating those, quote, unnecessary occupational licenses. But local residents don't agree. Texas's unemployment rate is fine. It's at the national average, which is 3.8%. Um, it's not below, it's not above, it's right there. So I think this is going about the wrong way in trying to create those jobs. I don't see how taking away uh, regulations on, you know, on styling and barbering, how that is safer for Texas and is creating safer jobs when <coughs> this helps to watch out for people and their health and their, you know, their well-being. We did this all today. Good to see it like this though. I mean, process is a process, right? And progress is progress, so. That progress will span across the region. It begins in on US 84 uh, in between shallow water and Lubbock. And it comes around and south into South Lubbock County. This week, just one of the many businesses affected by the future Loop 88 shut its doors. But they won't be closed for good. There's a lot of customers that are kind of upset because we're moving out of the area, but I told them we're going to be right off a of slide road, you know. It's not going to be too far, so hope they come and see this. Another to soon head out. Keep driving, how can I help you? But with money they received from the right of way, they'll soon be in their new home at 114th in Indiana. Thank you. Have a good one. Now, almost 10 years later, 
we're, we're about to get to the point where we, can, where we can actually start construction. Chicago Avenue to Avenue U. That section will be the first part of Loop 88 that, we'll, that we will begin construction on. Big changes for these small businesses on the edge of a busy highway. It's going to be a good change going back into the city, so I like it. I'll enjoy it. I think everybody else is going to enjoy it, too. Sydney Kessler, KCBD News Channel 11. Karen and Abner, I've spent a lot of time researching whether or not CBD is legal, and the answer is, well, very confusing. This conversation first got started with this post from the Seminole Police Department saying that contrary to popular belief, CBD oils are still illegal in the state of Texas. And then it goes on to warn businesses in town that they may want to rethink advertising and selling the products. Well, this got a lot of people talking, many who said that the statement was false because, well, those CBD products are sold right here in the Hub City. So I contacted the Lubbock DA, who explained the answer to me, but to fully understand, you first have to know the differences between CBD and THC. Now, both chemicals are found in the marijuana plant, but THC is the chemical that gets you high. Now, many think that you can get CBD without THC, but according to pot specialists, the DA's office, and police, when you extract the CBD chemical from THC and all of those ways are different and not one of them is perfect, you almost always get a little bit of THC. And it's that reason that lawmakers are saying, no, CBD is not legal. When I talked to the DPS chemist, you know, as of, I guess it was a month ago, he says right now, he says everything's still the same in Texas law, which if there's any THC detected, it's considered a, uh, a crime. CBD users frequently use the drug for medical purposes and typically because it does not contain any THC. The gray one? Okay, I can do that. Something this vape shop owner says she has papers to prove. And the testing I have is from the distributor, say it's this distributor. I immediately ask for their testing and it shows everything in each product and how much is in there. Like how much CBD, how much uh, say coconut oil or a flavor additive or anything else, it's all in there. And it'll tell you the THC, like a lot of them were 0.0. .0. But to her surprise and many others, the Seminole Police Chief says those tests don't matter. Not all manufacturers are using the same process. And that's why the FDA, I think, is starting to go and is going to start regulating in that to make sure that everything's below the 0.3 that's now being put out there. But there's some products out there apparently are not making that standard. And that's what we're concerned about. You know, stuff's being purported as being just hemp and come find out it's not. That 0.3% comes from the Farm Bill that was enacted across the country, which legalizes hemp if the THC percentage is below 0.3. Um, I had chocolate, I had gummies. However, the state law says any level of THC is illegal. My policy right now is if we catch people on the street with it, then we'll handle it that way like we normally would any other narcotics investigation, because I know there's a lot of gray area in there. And now the Seminole Police Department is warning local shops. He told me I needed to get everything off my shelves immediately, or it was like considered a felony misdemeanor. I just don't want anybody to get unnecessarily charged with a crime because they put basically put the cart before the horse, started selling stuff before the, everything was in place to legally sell it. What would make CBD legal though, would be HB 4508, which is currently making its way through the House. House Bill 4508 specifically deals with the CBD oil deal because even they know that there's an issue with the law or they wouldn't be uh, trying to get a bill in there to clarify. So uh, I'm basically asking for voluntary compliance right now. I can kind of slow down, let's wait and see. So until then, this vape shop in Seminole says they'll wait and hopefully avoid any trouble. I took everything off my shelf and I guess we're just going to go with I guess what the legislator has to say and I don't know if they're ever going to pass it or what's going to happen with that. A spokesperson from the Lubbock DA's office told us that CBD commonly contains traces of THC and under the current Texas law that means that most forms of CBD are illegal. Now for those of you living in the hub city the Lubbock Police Department wants to remind you that despite what a label may say is something test positive for any level of THC, you could be held liable for possession of an illegal substance. Karen Abner, 